Here with us now is Ojinik Aupe with stories trending around the world. Hello, Jinik. Good morning, Dr. Fatih. <laughs> <laughs> We've been hanging out for two hours. Oh, yeah. Good. Jinx. Good morning, Rufai. Jinx. I'm actually enjoying this. <laughs> to know we miss you, though. <laughs> I'm sure she's watching. Yes. Well, let's begin what's trending. Following insecurity crisis in Anambra State, a former Minister of Education, Obieze Kwesili, called on the National Assembly on Thursday to invite President Muhammadu Buhari to account for insecurity in the country. The former minister made the call while reacting to the recent beheading of a member of the Anambra State House of Assembly, Okechuku Okoye, by unknown gunmen. Okoye's head was found without his body days after he was abducted on Saturday, May 21st. In the meantime, seven persons, including a mother and four of her children, were killed by unknown gunmen in Anambra State over the weekend. Meanwhile, the Anambra Police Command has alleged that some communities in the state are shielding criminals, attacking, killing and maiming innocent people. I am, uh, we're reading this uh, report from the Anambra State Police uh, Command stating that, you know, they have intelligence that some people or some community members are shielding these unknown gunmen. I call them terrorists. I don't know if you saw the videos that were circulating of this poor woman and her children that were killed. I think Ms. Ezekwesili is in order for NAS to request for President Muhammad Buhari to um, you know, give account on these insecurity challenges that we are facing in the country. Dr. Abati. Well, the box stops at the president's yes. desk, uh, whether it is uh, insecurity or famine or marital crisis or violence in any part of the country, in any shape, every citizen you know, has a right to say, Mr. President, please do something, because that's what he elected, he was elected to do. And the president himself had said, you know, uh, security is one of his major priorities. But just about a year uh, to the end of his tenure, we still see that this remains a major problem and will still constitute a major problem uh, for, the, uh, for whoever comes in as president of Nigeria uh, next year as President Buhari's successor. So to that extent, uh, 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 obviously, Kusili is perfectly in order to say that, look, the National Assembly should summon the president to come and give account in terms of what he has been able to do or not do with regard to the challenge of insecurity in the country. All of this in the context of the fact that Kaduna State has practically been turned into a killing field. The entire Middle Belt, you know, from Plateau State uh, to Benue, you know, is also another killing field. No part of the country is safe. If you go towards uh, Sokoto, we have had the uh, sad story of uh, a young lady, Deborah Samuel, being uh, set ablaze by her own uh, contemporaries, by her colleagues uh, at the Shewi Shagari College of Education. If you come to Lagos, uh, motorcyclists, have commercial motorcyclists, that is, have constituted themselves into a menace. They killed their son, the David Emo, in, uh, in the Lekki uh, area. And, uh, uh, succeeded in, in, in sending uh, uh, two other persons into a state of unconsciousness, into coma, and they are still in the, in the hospital. So everywhere you look in the country, then of course there's a sense of alarm. And of course all of this happening at a time when the political uh, process has begun, with the fear that politicians have their own problems, with their own you know, uh, architecture of violence. If you add that to the uh, uh, general madness that has overtaken the national psychosis that Nigeria is dealing with, then of course, every citizen has a right to be uh, scared. And so, yes, the only person that we can call upon is the uh, head of state, uh, the president, the commander in chief of the armed forces of, uh, of uh, Nigeria, the man who is in charge of the cohesive forces of the state to say, look, what can you do? What can you still do? You know, one year to the end of your tenure. Anambra presents us with a special case, so bad that in fact, political parties are even adjusting their timetables because unknown government, because hypothesis is not responsible for some of these things, most of these things, you know, are telling people that you, you, you must stay at home and not come out 
on certain days. So you have non-state actors overwhelming the state, influencing the direction of uh, the political uh, process, and the state appears to be almost completely overwhelmed and helpless. That in itself is a problem. Second, uh, Professor Charles Soludo, when he was uh, sworn in where, during his inauguration, said that he was going to take a security, insecurity as a major challenge and address it. Every effort that he has made has not uh, you know, yielded uh, expected results. His expectations have not been met. He has ap appealed to both the unknown government and also IPOP. He has even gone on a visit to the IPOP leader, uh, uh, Mazi Namdi Kanu, uh, in DSS uh, detention, all in an attempt you know, to find a way out of the crisis in the Southeast, particularly his own state. Rather, what he has now seen is a special attack on his own community, where he comes from, a way of sending a, a message to him. Police station in his own community has, has been attacked. People have been killed in his own community. And then the unfortunate uh, beheading of, uh, of uh, uh, Honorable Okoye of the Anambra State House of uh, Assembly. As if this unknown government, because they are now called unknown government, right, continue to wreck havoc, to send a message, not just to the uh, governor of Anambra State, to also the Nigerian state. This is an indication of how the rains continue to beat us in this country, and we all remain helpless, uh, uh, you know, in the face of all of this. Because truly, it's not, about, it's not just about Anambra or about Sokoto or about the Northeast. It's about Nigeria and how, you know, uh, nobody can sleep with two eyes uh, closed in this country at this moment, because you don't know the extent of it. And I just hope that uh, the call on uh, President Buhari, you will see it in the context also of the political season and the need to make sure that he hands over a country that is peaceful, that is safe, that is stable. And I hope the uh, uh, various uh, political uh, uh, gladiators some of them don't even have a, a manifesto yet. They don't even have an agenda. They have not even given enough thought to what they say they want to do. But by next week, maybe we'll have clarity, and we'll begin to hold them down to the basic issues, and security will be uh, top of the list also. Dr. Bazi, you raised a very valid point, uh, Rufa, I'll ask you that. Mm. I mean, what message are they trying, these terrorists trying to send Governor Soludo at this point? If you recall, he has been talking about trying to ensue peace in Anambra, even going to visit the IPOB leader, and the IPOB leader even admitting that these sit-at-homes or whatever it is that these people are trying to do, it's not, it's not IPOB, it, mm. it has nothing to do with IPOB. So what message are these terrorists trying to send? The message is clear. They want violence. They want to disrupt the states. They want to make Governor Soludo's reign terrible. It's as simple as ABC. But in all of this, we keep asking, where does the state come in? And I keep saying this because the state should reign supreme. It is a subjugation of our rights to the states because we believe the state will ensure protection as enshrined in Constitution 14, subsection 2. That makes us have a country. And when you have that, and the state is found wanting, and there's a big problem. If you follow Olusha Gombas, your former president, said, all of this can end if the leaders are willing. Then we should ask the state, why is it that we've not been able to end all of this security challenge? I have lost count of how many service chiefs we've changed. Since the advent of Boko Haram in the early 2000s, Nigeria has been under siege. Now it goes to every part of the country. What has the state been able to do? The state gets big chunks of our taxpayers' money to buy the best technology and the best armory. The state... Nigerian state should have the biggest form of violence today. They should have the monopoly of violence. But it looks as though armed proliferation and non-state actors have more monopoly of violence than the state. You hear all sorts of inious crimes, beheading. The last I heard somebody was beheaded was the days of Samuel Doe oh, on a plateau of Doe in Liberia where Samuel Doe's head was cut off. Did you see the video of the woman? The woman I couldn't even children. watch it. 
I couldn't watch horrible. it. Horrible. Because I've been really, having horrible really nightmares. Horrible. So we should ask the state, what's the state doing? And it's not the time for President Muhammadu Buhari to say we'll solve the problem. This is the time we want to see action. A lot of people voted in President Muhammadu Buhari because he's a military man and he will do the needful. But sometimes you ask what the state is doing. The state should come out true to us and tell us the truth. You see how we found wanting in Kano. At first, people came out and they were lying on TV. They said it's a gas explosion. Finally, the report came out yesterday. Kano State Police Command released a report that it was actually an improvised explosive device. We should tell ourselves the truth in this country. If we are not honest with ourselves, we can't move forward. What is the state doing in all of this? The baton goes back to the state. We can't keep making the people feel that they are loopholes. You see, how do you sell hope to people? You sell hope to people by showing courage. But if you can't show courage to them and you can't be honest and forthright with them, then it becomes problematic because the people don't believe you. Nigerians want to support their government to get rid of insecurity. But when you are not being honest with them, when it looks as though there's a case of favoritism, when you hear things like the DSS saying that a mob overpowered them and Deborah was killed, you ask questions. The state should rise up tall. When you need the support of the people, we, the people, will stand and support you. We want Nigeria to be safe. As it is today, nobody is safe. Even in the posh parts of Lekki, a couple of commercial motorcyclists can just decide to take laws into their hands and kill people, and nothing will happen. We'll see how the police will come up with David E. Moss' case. We are waiting. In another development, President Muhammad Buhari on Thursday condoled with the victims of the recent explosion in Kano State. The incident, which occurred on May 17th, resulted in the death of nine people, while several others sustained injuries. Buhari commiserated with the family members of the victims at the palace of the Emir of Kano, along with Abdullahi Ganduji, the governor of Kano State, the president who is in Kano, to attend the 58th anniversary of the Nigeria Air Force re-echoed his government's resolve to restore peace to every part of the country. Today, I can say confidently that the armed forces have indeed witnessed tremendous improvement in the first seven years. In particular, the provision of modern equipment and personnel motivation through enhanced welfare are also ongoing. Rest assured that as a government, we are willing to do even more to ensure the provision of the requisite support and encouragement to overcome various security challenges. I want to assure you that your sacrifices are well appreciated by Nigerians. And this government will not rest until peace and stability are fully restored to our nation. Well, President Muhammad Buhari has commiserated with those victims, but a lot of people are saying it is coming too late. I mean, this happened last week. He should have gone earlier. But also just commiserating with other victims of this uh, insecurity that we are facing in Nigeria, including the lady that died, the 22-year-old student of Sheo Shagari College of Education who was burned over comments, uh, blasphemous comments. Um, people are saying that he should, you know, have gone there to visit as well. Well, I mean, okay. As I said earlier in the other story, the box stops at the desk mm -hmm. of the president. Even if there is a marital squabble, you know, and uh, a wife leaves her husband, it is still legitimate for us to say that the president should go there and uh, intervene. Yeah. Because he's the father of the nation as legitimate. elected. You know, <laughs> these ones are serious because there is the loss of human lives. Yeah. Needless loss of human lives. And the president identifying with the affected families. You know, I don't see anything wrong in that. But in the case of uh, Kano, the president went there for the 58th uh, anniversary of the Nigerian uh, Air Force, an institution that has served the country very well. 
you know, whether in times of peace or in times, in times of war. But the only concern here is that the president being on the ground in Kano, I would have loved a situation where the president himself went to Sabongiri mm -hmm. to meet the people themselves. Instead of the people, you know, selected persons coming to meet the president at the palace of the uh, emir of Kano. Uh, his uh, visit, his empathy would have been more impactful if he had gone right there uh, to the scene of the tragedy and, you know, commiserated directly uh, with the people. But I understand the standard excuse, I imagine, uh, that the um, government would give is that, well, he didn't get security approval or it was not safe uh, for the president uh, to go to Sabongiri, where there should be no part of Nigeria that would be considered unsafe, either for the president or any citizen. And when there is any issue, the president going to uh, ground zero uh, to uh, identify with the affected persons would have a greater impact. The second part of it is that it's most unfortunate that the police command in Kano is now saying, oh, it's no longer gas explosion, <laughs> that it is now uh, improvised explosive device, whatever that means. Look, we had two major guests on this program, the director of the uh, State Emergency Management Agency. We also had the, uh, uh, police, uh, a police spokesperson uh, from uh, Kano State. Both of them insisted that the, this was gas explosion. And we kept telling them on this same morning show that, look, the eyewitnesses, the persons right there, are saying that this was not gas explosion, that it was a bomb. They said, no, it was not. We also talked about the mangled body of the, uh, of the suicide bomber. Yes. They said, no, it was not true. Now the same, uh, uh, you know, police, they've now turned around and they have said, oh, based on their investigations, it's no longer gas cylinder. It, that level of incompetence is disgraceful. It, it, it justifies, you know, the, the dissatisfaction of Nigerians with the performance of our security agencies, particularly the Nigerian police force, which seems to have a reputation for inefficiency, for jumping to conclusions. Because we asked this uh, police spokesperson that came on the program, he said, how did you just arrive at the conclusion within hours? He said, no, that was what a preliminary investigation, uh, you know, discussed. <laughs> People must not wear uniform or occupy political positions or official positions in Nigeria and use that as a, as a privilege to tell Nigerians lies. This is, and I have not seen any apology from the Kano State uh, Police Command. The, those guys that came here to lie to us and to uh, uh, Nigerians and the international community, you know, they owe everybody uh, an apology. You know, if you are doing police work, we are not policemen, but there's enough common sense to know that at least you do your investigations begin, before you begin to rule out uh, every other option and you jump to uh, conclusions. That's that about that. I mean, see, you see, Oji, if you want to build a country, the things that really build a country are not the government structures of the building, are the things that are unseen. Empathy, love, trust, brotherliness. You know, the French motto said, liberté, égalité et fraternité. Liberty, equality, brotherhood. Those are the things that build the country. And let me tell you something. Apart from big government budget and everything, and big government building, and big military and all of that, the most important things are the brotherhood, the friendship, the love, the empathy for the citizens. You know what it is today? All the most important things in nation building are the things lacking in Nigeria today. The most unimportant things are the things dominant. Big fan account by government officials, big car, big money, big portfolio. I am empowered, do you know who I am? And that's why Nigeria is crumbling. If we are visiting victims of a bomb blast, you should go into their homes. I don't want to make comparison. And I'm not saying because Dr. Abad is here. I remember when synagogue building fell, President Goodluck Jonathan visited the synagogue. He went there where the thing happened. You don't call people that are in pain to come and meet you 
in your high horse. Empathy, feeling their pain. And for the Shineni gun that the Kano State Police Command, the, the parody they did on TV, we saw it. You think you can lie to Nigerians? Nigerians knew from day one. The first training in journalism is eyewitness accounts should be believed. Because eyewitness can lie. We even confronted the police with a report of a certain uh, man called Yawa. The message I was trying that Chidi Onikalu, President Chidi Onikalu put on social media as at 9.55 a.m. that a suicide bomber tried to bomb, but they denied it. But you see, if you want to cover a lie, be careful, because lies have short legs. They told me this long ago as a child. Guess what happened? You know when they couldn't deny it any longer? It was when DSS released the report that they arrested some people with IDs that they knew they couldn't lie any longer. We can't build a nation this way. Well, thank you all. Thank well, you both. Thank you very much, uh, Genix. Great analysis. Uh, good to see you again good on this side. Uh, see you. Sitting nice to me.